Hello boys and girls, let's read a royal sleepover today. Psst, Elsa? Anna gently nudged her sister. Wake up! Elsa shift, groggy. Go to bed, Anna, she said. I can't sleep. Anna flopped down on Elsa's bed. Then she smiled slyly. Wanna have a sleepover? Elsa opened her eyes and grinned. That sound like fun. Anna went to her room to find extra pillows and blankets. Meanwhile, Elsa headed to the kitchen to get the ingredients for her famous honeycombs. After all, a sleepover wasn't a sleepover without snacks. When Elsa got back to her room, she found Anna digging through the closet. Aha! Anna cried. I knew it was here. Anna held up an old worn book. Her parents had read it to the sisters every night when they were little. Let's see. We've got books, games, and this face cream Oaken gave me the last time we went to the trading post. Anna said. She opened the cream. It looks kind of goopy. Elsa laughed. Let's save that for later. Elsa looked around. It had been a long time since she had had to sleep over. So, what should we do first? She asked. Anna was ready. How about we build a fort like when we were kids? She suggested. Anna stacked pillows and blankets around the room, making lookouts and hidden caves. Meanwhile, Elsa created icy tunnels and snowy turrets. This is fun, Elsa said, putting the finishing touches on an icy archway. I think we should add a smack! Elsa felt something soft and feathery hit her back. She turned to see a fallen pillow and a giggling Anna. Oh no, you don't, Elsa yelled. Launching a snowball at her sister, Anna ducked, squealing in delight. Before long, the room was covered in snow flurries and feathers. Anna was zooming down an icy slide on the fort when there was a knock at the door. Is it daytime already? A familiar voice asked. Olive! Anna cried. The sisters welcomed their snowman friend inside. Elsa explained that they were having a sleepover and invited Olive to join them. A sleepover? Olive asked, excited. Oh, I've always wanted to have one of those, he paused. What's a sleepover? We'll show you, Anna said. Come on, we were just about to play a game. Soon the friends were happily playing. Olive was a natural at pick up sticks. And Anna was great at work of art. She guessed every drawing and sculpture. Charade proved to be a bit more challenging. Olive twisted his body this way and that, making frantic gestures and grinning wildly. The sisters didn't know what the answer could be. And finally, Elsa had an idea. Olive, are you acting out summer? She asked. Yes, he cried. You are good at this. Elsa laughed. Maybe it's time to do something else, she said. How about a scary story? Anna went first, using her spookiest, most dramatic voice. 
According to legend, the hairy hooligan only comes out on nights like these, looking for his next victim. How do you know when the hairy hooligan is around? Olive asked. He let out a low moan. Anna answered. A sad whine echoed through the room. Wow, that's really scary, Anna. Olaf said, impressed. Uh, Anna blinked. That wasn't me. The cry sounded like it was coming from outside the castle. Elsa, Anna, and Olaf ran to the window. There was. There was a shadowy figure walking toward them. Stay here, Elsa said, running down the hall. But Anna and Olive followed. They couldn't let Elsa face the hairy hooligan alone. Elsa opened the castle door, and the friends peered into the darkness. Olive held Anna's hand, bracing himself for the hairy hooligan's pointed teeth and sharp claws. But it wasn't a monster after all; it was Sven. Sven, Elsa called out, "What's wrong?" Anna took one look at the reindeer and guessed what was going on. You couldn't sleep, could you, Sven? She patted him on the nose. I bet Kristoff is snoring and keeping you awake. The troll said his snores are loud enough to start an avalanche. Sven nodded. Soon the group was happily settled in Elsa's room. How about another story? Elsa suggested. She held out the book her parents had read to her and Anna all those years earlier. Excellent, Anna agreed. She fluffed some pillows, and she, Olive, and Sven got comfortable as Elsa began reading. Once upon a time, a little while later, Elsa reached her favorite part of the story, and then the brave queen slayed the dragon. She read. Elsa stopped, hearing the seconds of heavy breathing around her. The rest of the summer party had fallen asleep. Smiling, Elsa put down the book. She gently tucked in Anna, Olive, and Sven, and climbed into bed. Then, with one last book and Anna and her friends, Elsa too drifted off to sleep. And this is the end of the story.